Okay. And um, we, we just replace it with the new motor. And this shaft won't go in the motor. Will not go in? No. As a teacher, you always want your students to be prepared for when things come their way, but uh, it's hard for new students who've never experienced anything like VEX competition before to stand on two feet, go through losses, watch things fall apart, and still get back up and have the confidence to you know, move forward with the next match. What I try to do all the time is prepare them for that, even in, in the classroom setting. We go through certain drills to try to mimic what might happen in a real match situation. Um, and even though we do that, there's still nothing like the real thing. I think we might be doing our students a disservice if we didn't show them what failure actually looked like, what adversity looked like, what it means to actually not do well. I think when students understand that things aren't just going to be given to them, they have to actually work really hard to try and succeed, it means more when they actually do succeed. Problem solving is a big issue, I feel like, in today's world. A lot of young people don't really understand what it really means to be able to have a critical thinking mind and a problem solving mind, to be able to think clearly, move past problems, organize your thoughts and, and come up with a solution in some way. I feel like VEX Robotics does that for students even at a very young age. They're tested, they're stressed, they understand that if they don't build things correctly, it's not just going to appear out of the sky and all of a sudden start to work. It's not how the game works, it's not how the system works. In addition to that, I think it's important that as a teacher, I take a step back and let them have their success or failure in the first weeks of competition. It's important for them to understand that I'm not just going to jump in and save the day if in fact I'm trying to build character for them. They have to understand that they're the ones that are going to be responsible for their own success, not me. For the wheel turning in the match, the shaft is not, it, it goes in the motor, but it doesn't, but it doesn't stay in the motor during the match. Okay. So we need to tie in the collar so it can stay in it the whole match. Okay. The shaft, uh -huh. with it bending into the aluminum, mm -hmm. it's causing a big issue and it's making it click causing it to lose all of its torque and bending the shaft and that's not good. <laughs> right. We're using it as a push button. You're using it as a push button now? Yeah, like just the back. Okay. Or something. Yeah. Alright. And if I do it, and if I do it correctly, I'll, I believe that I will build a better group of students that are more prepared to be placed in jobs, to be able to have proper judgment, and to be able to problem solve and not get flustered and not know what to do. At least that's my goal. Today we didn't do so well, and that's okay. I think it's actually really great because they come back with a better understanding of my teacher's not just gonna come in and put his red cape on and completely build a, a magnificent robot for me so that I win every match. When they understand that, they take ownership of what they build, and then that gives me my cue later on in the classroom when they've gone through their hurts and their pains to be able to teach them and coach them into being successful. That way, when they are successful, it's their success and not mine.